In 2006, Nintendo released the Wii, a system that everybody, including Grandma, enjoyed. And in 2012, Nintendo would release the Wii U. The Wii U was not a smash hit. There's a lot of reasons why the Wii U wasn't as successful as the Wii, but the biggest was that the cell phone ate up the casual market, meaning that people who bought the Wii for bowling were content playing Candy Crush on their new shiny phone. My name is Nick, and this is a companion guide to my series Retronomics, which follows price trends in video games. This video is meant to be an evergreen video, so I won't get too much into the details on the prices, but I will have a separate video that I'll link in the pinned comment, so no matter when you see this video, the recent pricing video will only be a click away. Think of this video as a jumping off point. I'll leave links in the description for you to explore if you want to go further. The Wii U sold 13.5 million units in a five year lifespan. And while there are some fantastic games on the system, the Wii U's sales performance led a lot of armchair analysts to suggest that Nintendo should leave the hardware space altogether like Sega did after the Dreamcast. Nintendo did see the writing on the wall with the Wii U and quickly worked to bring a successor that we know now as the Nintendo Switch. But we're not talking about the Nintendo Switch, we're talking about the Wii U. And if you were considering buying one for the first time, now is a fantastic time to do so. This video will give you information to ensure that when you do buy a Wii U, you know what you're getting into. First off, the Wii U is backwards compatible with the Nintendo Wii, and as such, can use almost every accessory made for the Wii. While the Wii U has a DVD drive, it doesn't play DVD movies or music CDs. It only plays Wii and Wii U games. And if you were thinking of enjoying Netflix, Hulu, or even YouTube, all of those services were shut down. So any media that you play on the Wii U will be games. The Wii U is region locked, meaning that games imported from Japan, for example, will not play on a North American console. This region locking also extends to the Wii U's gamepad, which I'll get into more detail later on in this video. The only other differences in Wii U's is color and storage size. If you are buying a Wii U, there are some things that are required for first time use. As the Wii U ages, it will be more common to see the Wii U unit by itself, which wouldn't be a big deal for other consoles, except you need the gamepad. The gamepad is going to come up a lot in this video, but for now, it's required to set up your Wii U and change any of the system settings. The gamepad is also region locked, so importing it from Japan isn't an option unless you want a Japanese Wii U. So make sure the Wii U bundle you purchase at the very least includes the console and a working gamepad. The other things that are required are the AC adapter for the Wii U and the AC adapter for the gamepad. There are third party solutions for the power, but I would recommend official parts because the price difference isn't that big and I always trust branded items when it comes to powering my electronics. And next, you might think that I would say AV cables are required, but technically you can play the majority of the games on the gamepad. The gamepad even includes a sensor bar for Wii games. But if you do want to play on your TV, you can use an HDMI cable, or if for some reason you want to play on a CRT, you can do that as well with Wii composite or component cables. The Wii U comes with a gamepad and that's required at the very least to set up the system and change any settings and also it's required for some games. The gamepad is pretty interesting. Well, now that the Switch is out, it isn't as novel, but you could play most of the Wii U games on the gamepad with the television off. And that's actually one of the main reasons why I bought it back when my wife and I lived in a one bedroom apartment with only one TV. You still need the Wii unit to do the heavy lifting, so it's not as versatile as the Switch. The Wii U gamepad also comes with a camera and also can be used as a Wii sensor when in Wii mode. You can actually play Wii games off of the gamepad. And it can be used as a universal TV remote, which is pretty cool. The gamepad also comes with a rechargeable battery, which does lose its charge over time. and. 
Luckily, Nintendo did make it really easy to replace it, so if your gamepad no longer holds a charge, adding a fresh battery should remedy that. You can also play while charging the gamepad as well. If the gamepad is too bulky, you can use a Pro Controller. The Nintendo Pro Controller isn't anything new by today's standards, but it is very comfortable and has a considerably long battery life. Since the Wii U can play Wii games, Wii controllers are used while in Wii mode, but a handful of games in Wii U mode as well. Smash Bros. Wii U, for example, can use almost every Wii controller combination, including the Classic Controller Pro. Smash Bros. Wii U can also use a GameCube controller with a special adapter, however, that's really all you can use it for. You'll have to check each game to see what was compatible at the time, but most games utilize the Pro Controller or the GamePad. Unlike the GameCube, the Wii U has onboard storage for saving and installing games. The Wii U originally came in 8GB or 32GB models, and I would get the 32GB model. The white Wii U mostly had 8GB, but it was refurbished with 32GB in North America. 32 gigs might not seem like a lot, and you'd be right, but you can expand with a USB hard drive as long as it has a dedicated power source. You can use a dedicated flash drive, but Nintendo doesn't recommend this to use because of the amount of times it gets read and written. I know that some flash drives can get pretty toasty, so if you use one, use it at your own risk if you go that route. The Wii U can only support up to two terabytes of storage, so don't go too wild for looking for a drive. Also, you will need to format it specifically for the Wii U, so plan on making that drive dedicated to the Wii U. I personally haven't run out of any space, but if you are planning on backing up your data, it might be worth it to start out with 100 gigs or so and then go from there. While the Wii U can play most of the games on the gamepad negating the need for a television, the screen is still pretty tiny and not all games are playable on the gamepad exclusively. One of the cool things about the Wii U is that the games like Wind Waker HD for example can play on the TV and then you could use your gamepad that can act as an inventory and map without needing to pause the game. Also if you don't want to use the bulky gamepad and instead use a more traditional controller you're going to need AV cables unless you really want to play off of that gamepad. And it's really easy this time around compared to the GameCube. The Wii U has HDMI and can output to 1080p, and I'm sure that you have a couple of HDMI cables laying around at this point. But if you want to play on a CRT, well, you can play on composite or component with Wii cables. I don't really recommend it unless you have a fancy 16x9 CRT. While the Wii U will work with a 4x3 display, most of the games won't run in a full 4x3 ratio. It's convenient if you want to run older games like on the virtual console or if you want to run it in Wii mode. Unlike the GameCube, the Wii U doesn't really have any variations, just mostly storage related. 8GB and 32GB, which in North America kind of dictates what color that you can get. The 8GB model in the US was white and the 32GB deluxe version was black, although there are some North American white Wii U's out there that have the 32GB. They weren't really sold at retail, they were refurbished by Nintendo, so keep an eye out if you're really interested in a white Wii U with bigger storage space. The only significant variation is the Wind Waker version which I have here. The Wii U is the first Nintendo console that I didn't buy at launch and the Wind Waker one was really cool. There are other variations if you want to call them that but they're mostly based on what was included as a digital download and the box looks different. Otherwise it's the same Wii U and gamepad. And like I mentioned before, the Wii U is region locked, so don't go importing a gamepad if you aren't going to have it with an imported console. As of the recording of this video, no one has figured out how to make gamepads work outside of their respective regions. 
there aren't a lot of first party Wii U accessories that expand the use of the Wii U like the GameCube did. Most of the accessories were included in the deluxe model of the Wii U, specifically the charging cradle, which not only displays your gamepad but charges it at the same time. There's also the GameCube controller adapter, which is used with Smash Brothers. I mean, and you have Amiibos, which were mainly used for Super Smash Brothers, Wii U, and 3DS, but they also have a variety of uses across a number of different games. But they can easily be spoofed, so don't go spending too much money unless you like the look of them. The Wii U has some really good games. Most are on the Nintendo Switch, but that means that they are cheap on the Wii U. The games that are expensive can arguably be considered collector's items. The most expensive individual game that isn't a bundle is Devil's Third, which was notoriously so bad that Nintendo cut production of the game in North America. When it was first launched, there were only 750 copies rumored, which made the price jump immediately, but Nintendo eventually made more, which brought the price back down to $50 until 2020 came along where the price returned to around $400. Will it come down? Well, you have to check out my Retronomics videos for that. Nintendo also offered copies of their games digitally, and I say offered because the store has essentially been defunct since August of 2022. Nintendo removed the ability to add funds to the store. There was a workaround using your Switch account, but at the end of March 2023, the store will be shut down forever. However, if you did miss out, there is still another way to experience those games. Soft modding is an available method and while there is always risk that you might brick your Nintendo Wii U, detailed guides are available. And when you mod your Wii U, you can free the Wii U from its region lock, have access to homebrew and emulators along with the ability to make and play your Wii U backups. CheaperGamer.co.uk has a really good guide and there are plenty of tutorials on YouTube. And even if you didn't want to play your backups or homebrew, jailbreaking your Wii U is something that you really should consider because there is a potential of the NEND memory corrupting, potentially bricking your Wii U. Backing up the NAND is easy to do, and I'll link a video from Voltar in the description. There aren't really any other mods like mod chips because of the jailbreak, and that makes third party hardware solutions redundant. As of the recording of this video, there are no other consoles that play Wii U games natively. That means that if you don't want a Wii U to play Wii U games, you either need to buy a Switch with the Wii U ports or emulation. CEMU is a fantastic emulator that can play your legally acquired backups. Of course, as always, I can't link to where you can find backups if you somehow lost yours, but I'm sure if you poke around Google, you'll find an archive of digital games somewhere. But most of the physical games currently are inexpensive, but since the eShop is no longer accessible, finding backups of those games, especially those locked onto the Wii U, perhaps forever, might be a good idea to find and download. That's going to do it for this video on the Nintendo Wii U. I hope it was helpful. Let me know in the comments what you would want to see in future videos like this one. If you're new here and you're looking to start buying Nintendo Wii U games, I suggest checking out Retronomics, my series that follows price trends in video games. The most current video is pinned in the comment below, and if you're watching this in the first week of publishing, a next new video is coming up next week, so make sure you're subscribed for future content. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and share it with anyone who might find it interesting. And if you like podcasts, check out my Super Nintendo Freemium channel, which hosts Super Nintendo Unscripted. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Snicktendo. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Super Nintendo, and I'll see you next time.